Last week, we talked about that God should open our eyes. And if our eyesight is given to us, not in the form of the, um, the physical, but in our spiritual life, if our eyes begins to open, we will understand who this God is and how we can achieve greater things as people and children of God. Today, I wanted to go on with this subject. Matter tonight, or this morning or afternoon, I've entitled it, Stay Focused. Stay Focused. So many things can cause us to derail from the plan that God has given to us. I thank God that the Lord has given us eyes to see. And then when we see or we begin to observe things, those things tend to help us to enjoy or it gives us hope. Some other ways to come or get away from danger. When our eyes begins to see things, it brings joy and hope to us. And therefore, the psalmist says in 119, verse 18, it says, Open my eyes that I may see the wondrous things from your law. It is so important, very, very important thing that I pray that this will be a prayer topic for every believer, every child of God. When we talk about seeing as we discussed last week, it's not just about looking at things or how we walk around each day of our life. But we are talking about how we perceive things or discern things visually. Open my eyes that I may see. Open my eyes that I may see. And then when we begin to see stuff, then we must stay focused on these things that we have seen. Our perception of things around us, as we begin to observe them, tends to shape us or direct us regarding the information upon which we have acquired. When we begin to see things, it... it, it those things we see begins to work within us. Like I said earlier, if it is danger, it tends to make us work against it. If it is something that we admire so much, it uh, helps us or it energizes us to work towards those things. And so it is my prayer that just like the psalmist said that God should open his eyes, we will daily pray that our eyes will be open to discern matters around us. Many of us are falling into pits that if we have acknowledged them before we got into it, we would have made the necessary changes that we could have done. We all may have fallen into diverse ways of situations which when we come out of this, we sometimes say to ourselves, if I had known previously or if I had known earlier, it would have helped. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 says, May God open the eyes of our understanding. And therefore, this is the prayer that I ask that we should pray. That may God open my eyes, that I may understand such that I may know that what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of his glory and the inheritance that goes or moves with it as Christians? The Bible says in um, Genesis chapter 30 about Jacob and Laban, his uncle. We've heard a story where Jacob went to his uncle's house and served so long a time because he needed something. And the Bible says that after he had got married to his wife, it got to a time that Jacob had to leave. And so Jacob went to his uncle and told the uncle to give him uh, a portion of the things that he has worked for. Or the, the, the increase, the flock that 
through him had come into the family. And when Jacob went to the uncle, they came in an agreement. And the agreement was that Jacob said to him, I'm going to go through the flock. Any of the flock that or the animals that I find that are spotted and speckled, those I will take. Or let those be mine. And this agreement was settled. And the scripture goes on to say that Jacob then began to pick up all those speckled and spotted animals in the uh, animal pen. He started taking them because it was an agreement. And the Bible says that as Jacob took all the animals that had those spots on them, he later went on to do something else to acquire more wealth. And what did he do? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 30, the Bible says that Jacob took or went and um, placed a, 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 a stick or a rib somewhere and had a color on it which is white. The Bible says that Jacob then brought the animals at a time of their heat to drink water and as they come close and they begin to look at that spotted image that he had created those animals will come out and will give birth to um, their offsprings that are spotted and he asked the agreement has been because they are spotted it become it became that of Jacob in chapter 30 in verse 38 of Genesis chapter 30 I read and the rods which he had peeled, he set before the flocks in the gutters, in the watering troughs where the flock came to drink, so that they should conceive when they came to drink. So the flocks conceived before the rods, and the flocks brought forth streaked, speckled, and spotted. Verse 41, and it came to pass, whenever the stronger livestock conceived, that Jacob placed the rod before the eyes of the livestock in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods. People looking at things, perceiving things, it is not just looking at it. It goes on to affect our whole mental work. And if it goes on to do that, it affects the way we do things. Animals were able to look at spotted image, and these things that they looked at and they began to they began to observe created some sort of thing within them. And as they came out and uh, began to uh, give birth, they were giving birth to spotted animals. This Jacob guy is very smart. He had been smart from the day one, and kept moving on in that. People, it is so important to look. It is so important to perceive. But look at what Jacob did. He did not just put those objects somewhere and allow the animals to move somewhere. But when we read the scriptures, we realize that he positioned the animal at a, at a place whereby the only thing they can observe was that thing he has created. And so I wanted to submit to you that observing things or looking at things or seeing things has something one way or the other goes to the position or where we stand. Where you stand also goes on to affect the way you look at things. Where do you stand to look at things? If I take the number six and I turn it around, Someone may say it's nine. The other may say it is six. The way you look at things has something to do with our perception. How we observe things. How we, 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 it will transcend for us to understand. It is very vital. And Jacob's animals came up with what he had placed before them. Today, I want you to know and to hear that if we can succeed in life, how we look at things is very important. You know, you may be doing what you are doing because of what you saw. 
and how you took it in. You bought the car you are driving, you bought the dress you are wearing, you bought the home you are in because of the way you saw it and how it appealed to you and how you, you saw yourself into it and all these things went into you. You processed it and he said, among all those clothing, this is the one I want to pick. This is the color I want. This is the, the, the shape of a building I want. This is the type of car I want to drive in. And you took it. And so people, what we see, what we look at, how we perceive things, goes on to change our lives. Amen. Bible says in Luke chapter 19, there is this story about a, a, a rich man, yet very short, well-known, popular person in the community. The Bible says that when this man heard that Jesus Christ was coming, or heard that Jesus was in the town in Jericho. The Bible says that he ran ahead of Jesus. And he climbed a tree. Luke chapter 19 verse 1 downwards it says. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold there was a man named Zacchaeus. Who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. He was very rich. A tax collector and the Bible says he was rich. Verse 3 says, and he sought to see who Jesus was. He sought to see who Jesus was. He had a plan to see who Jesus was. He looked forward to see who Jesus was. And so he began to, to put into place how he can achieve those things that he has perceived within him. He wanted to see. So Bible says that he, but the, the, his nature, he wanted to see Jesus, but he was short. And the people that were all around him were taller than him. But Bible says Zacchaeus ran ahead of Jesus or ran ahead of the people because he knew that the Lord Jesus will pass by that road. He has studied Jesus for quite a long time. And he has seen that anytime he's in the city, this is where he, go, he, he passes. Or maybe in those days, that was the only high street that was in the town that he could go. And so the Bible says that Zacchaeus ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was going to pass there. He ran ahead, climbed a place to see him. Where you stand, where you stand, where you stand can tell a lot about how, what you, how you do things. No, I'm not only talking about standing as standing in the uh, uh, on on a, a platform or on a street, but I'm talking about a spiritual concept of where you stand determines how you look at things. Where you stand in an ideology, where you stand in some form of scriptures that you have acquired, where you stand tends to minister to you. And if you are not careful, the place where you are standing may give you wrong information. Praise the Lord. Where you stand. Someone may even tell you that Jesus will go this way. It is an information you have received. You took it in. You began to work with it. But it can be a wrong information. I pray, oh God. That my eyes will be open to understand the things that are around me. That the spirit of God will order my steps to places where, oh God, I can perceive things according to his directions. Praise the Lord. One gentleman by name Clement Stone once stated, Be careful the environment you choose for it will shape you. Be careful the environment you choose, for it will shape you. And he went on to say, be careful the friends you choose, for you can easily become like them. This goes like what? The law of, law of association. And we are a product of our environment. Our environment will 
put things uh, in our eyes, we will begin to observe things in our environment. And as we observe those things, it gets into our human life and we begin to change regarding or concerning the things that we have seen. Be very careful. The environment you choose for, it will shape you. Which environment are you in now as a child of God? Which environment are you now? Are you in the environment where the Bible says for those that are in Christ? Or you are in the environment where it it might be you are outside Christ. When you are in Christ, you see things differently. But when you are outside Christ too, you see things differently. It is those that are in Christ that the Lord will one day come for them. In these days of coronavirus, our environment counts. Hallelujah. Our environment, where you stand. I was listening to a man of God preaching just just this morning as I walked in. And one of the things that he said regarding the situation in which we are, which I want to say to you, church, we must take note of it. The environment upon which people stand today is that it is okay to go around and do all other things without any problem because the doors have been open. Faces are counting up. We are going to phase three in New York. We sit in the train. You go to the train. People are there. The shops are open. People go all out. All right. But... Upon all these things going on, people see the church as one of the most dangerous places to be when it comes to coronavirus. You being a child of God, you do all other things. But when it comes to the church, it's open. By the way, we will still soon open. When it comes to the church, it's open. Then you begin to say a whole lot of things and excuses upon excuses. Which environment do you stand? When it comes to doing things for God, you have several excuses. When it comes to living for Christ, you have every excuse. But when you, it comes to doing other things, outside that which the kingdom of God has laid down for us, the principle that he has laid down for us, That is easy. Which environment are you in? Which environment? I pray that we will change the environment we are in and begin to look forward to or look into the environment that God has created for us. And as we stay into it, we begin to focus on on that. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. When you begin to think about some other things or things, you begin to develop concerning those things that you are thinking about. And that is what you have seen with your spiritual eye. When you think it is a vision that has created in your mind and you tend to build upon that vision, So as a man thinks, the vision that he has seen, that is how this person begins to act. I pray that the people of God will begin to see Christ as they walk around. That is why the scripture says, this book of the law shall not depart out of our mouth. That we should daily meditate upon it. And as we begin to look into the written word of God, it begins to shape the way we think, the shape, the way we look at things, the, w- the way we begin to walk, the way we begin to talk, how, how we walk around. The book of the law will give us a different mindset. It will draw a different picture for us. Everyone in life must have a vision. We all must have something that we need to look to. As the animals were able to look at something and that was able to transform them and to bring forth some things. There are things that we must look forward to. 
You must have a vision in life. Don't walk on the surface of the earth without any vision, any plan. All you do is you wake up and you go. All you do, what, listen, whatever that you have to do, there must be a way to do it. And as I go on, I want to say to you, how can your visions or the goals that you set or those things that you see become achievable? How can those things that you have placed ahead of you become achievable? How can those things that are in your mind become achievable? The number one thing Bible says in Mark chapter 11 verse 24. Therefore I say to you, what things soever ye desire, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Therefore I say to you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, or when you pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. The number one thing in life is you must always desire something. It is whatsoever you desire. It is not whatsoever your friend desires. Some people work, work according to uh, um, the visions of their friend. They don't have any desire in their life. And because they don't have anything in their life, they work anyhow. Anyhow. But Jesus says, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask for when you pray, or when you desire, when you pray, believe that you have it. So number one, if we can achieve something in life, both spiritually and physically, we must desire something. You must desire something. And if you don't have a desire, begin to pray regarding something and put that desire there, write it down. Write that thing down. That at this age, at this time, at this moment, I want to achieve this. Then you begin to pray towards it, the number two. Pray concerning that desire. Begin to pray concerning that desire. Begin to put that desire in the hands of God. The Bible says, if God has not built it, anyone that begins to do it will do that in vain. So when you have that desire, let the desire come before the throne of God. He is the one that hears prayer. Oh God, you that hear prayer. And because you hear prayer, all men shall come to you. Psalm 37 verse 4 to 5 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. This, just delight yourself in the Lord. Get a desire. Begin to pray concerning that. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Verse 5. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. Commit thy way to the Lord. Commit that desire to the Lord. Trust in him and he shall bring it to pass. Number one, get a desire. Number two, what? Pray concerning that desire. And number three, believe in that vision that you have. That you will achieve it. And that is why I say set up an achievable goal. That desire must be achievable. Don't just put it there because people are doing it and you so do it. No. Don't do it like that. Look at your age. Look at who you are. What you can do. And start working towards that. Let that be a desire. And place the desire in the hands of God. Place the desire in the hands of God. What is your desire? And the students that are listening to me, what is your desire being in school? What are you looking forward to? What have you set before you? I have set the Lord always before me because he's on my right hand. I shall not be moved. Today I bless you that you and I pray that you will begin to have a vision. 
that you will begin to see in the realms of the spirit. May God help us to discern. May God help us to understand. May the eyes of understanding be open in the name of Jesus. I pray for every soul that are gathered or listening to me. I ask that God you will touch their life again. That we will be able to dream and that we will be placed at our right spots to see the visions and the desires that are created in our hearts. I come against every power of the enemy that may have worked against us to derail us from the path upon which we had before. In the mighty name of Jesus, I break loose every act the enemy is using, O oh God, to draw us away from you. On this day, I ask you, give us the strength to hold on to that which God you have placed in our hearts. Cause our eyes to open. Please, oh God, place your hand upon us and open our eyes to see what is around us. I honor you and I bless you, Jesus. I give you praise. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You mean more to us at Praise Palace than you may ever know. We appreciate you and we thank our friends and partners for making this ministry possible. Together, we are presenting the gospel to the world. Please contact us or visit praisepalace.org today to share your prayer request. Find out more about our resources, check out our upcoming events, and stay connected as we share the love of Christ around the globe.